The Super Smash Bros. series holds a special place in gaming today. Fans clamor to get their favorite character into the game, and developers are usually more than welcome to have their prized works of art be graced in Sakurai's masterpiece. After all, being immortalized in a Smash title is essentially free marketing for those games, and in some instances, has even been utilized by Nintendo themselves to test desire for certain characters in games before they go worldwide. Smash as a fighting game brings characters from all sorts of other games and lets them meet together on the battlefield in the largest crossover fighter of them all. Fighters usually have movesets or tactics from their original games, then balanced in a way to make sense in a platform fighter. It's no surprise we see characters like Charizard use Flamethrower, or Link use Boomerang after all, but that's not the case with every fighter. Some characters have aspects of them that needed to be created specifically for Smash to fill in gaps of lore, techniques, and design that wasn't present in their original games. The fact that Sakurai goes above and beyond for these characters is a true testament to his skill and devotion to this series, and in celebration of that, I'm here to run down the five characters that were designed exclusively for Super Smash Bros. But before all that, let me tell you about ProGuides.com. You there watching? <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> you obviously love Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and there's no better feeling than getting better at one of your favorite fighting games, and we're here to help you get better. Beyond our channel here, you can check out our website for tons of exclusive guides and videos on getting better at Smash Ultimate from specific character guides and even courses by professional players themselves like MKLeo, Esam, and more. Y'all picked up Esam? What the f***? <laughs> oh sh**, that's cool. Furthermore, we've recently launched live classes here on our YouTube channel. You can check out these classes live right now, Monday through Friday at 12pm Pacific Time. Make sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you can always know when the next video is coming out. Hey. <laughs> okay, so original characters for Smash, but one last thing, our question of the day. We've seen a lot of super unique characters hit Smash, like Mr. Game & Watch, Doug Hunt, neither of those are on today's list. And I want to know which super out there character would you add to the game? Go ahead and tell us in the comments below, then continue on with this video. Character number one, Captain Falcon. This fan favorite from the F-Zero series might as well be more of a Smash character than an F-Zero racer at this point. Besides the fact that we haven't seen Captain Falcon star in a game since 2004's Japan exclusive F-Zero Climax on the Game Boy Advance, the key here is the type of game he comes from, racing games. Yeah, our high adrenaline brawler archetype character was only behind the wheel from his original games. That means once the racer drifted his way into the first Smash title on the N64, that nearly his entire moveset had to be made from scratch. It's rumored that most of his moveset came from one of the original fighters in Dragon King the Fighting Game, which was a generic fighting game that was later modified to become Smash 64. He's one of the quickest fighters, and was until Sonic appeared in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. I suppose that was a good take, coming from a game where you're racing at hundreds of kilometers per hour, but otherwise, the high-octane racer is seen unleashing a fury of punches and kicks, often with a fire element attached to them. Smash arguably did more to cement the racer himself and his personality with iconic moves like the Falcon Punch, which was later used in the F-Zero anime with this iconic clip. Character number two, a character that didn't get a redesign valid for this video until the second time we saw him in Smash, Sheik. Once Zelda and Sheik entered the fray in Super Smash Bros. Melee, we saw them in all their glory of GameCube fidelity sporting their designs from Ocarina of Time on the N64. At the time, it was some of the best we've ever seen of the two characters. Just like Ocarina of Time, they made Zelda's down special transform her into Sheik, a quick character able to dish out deadly ninja-like combos and as many tiers beyond the princess she was prior. While Sheik didn't do all that much combat-wise in Ocarina of Time, we at least saw certain techniques being used, like Vanishing, which was used as her up B in Melee. So that's all good for Sheik and Melee, but why is she on this list? It's all about Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Most times when a new Smash title comes out, many characters will get visually updated to match their latest or most popular incarnation from their home game. It's kind of similar to how Mario got to wield Flood after Mario Sunshine, or how Fox was updated from his Star Fox 64 design in Melee to something that looked more like it was from Assault or Command for his appearance in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. In line of current releases, Zelda was visually redesigned in Brawl to resemble her appearance in The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, but she retained her same moveset, including turning into Sheik. But wait, Sheik doesn't appear in Twilight Princess, so what happened? It turns out that Eiji Aonuma, the producer of the Legend of Zelda series, had been working closely with Sakurai during the development of Brawl. During this time, he had his team provide Sakurai with concept images of what Sheik would have looked like in Twilight Princess, even though she never made it into the game. 
After some tweaks by the Smash team, we got to see the rendition of Sheik that we now know and love today. From game to game, this version of Sheik has remained. Smash 4 and Ultimate both share this mysterious Sheik design, one that is now completely unique to Smash and doesn't appear in any Legend of Zelda game. That's crazy. Number 3 on this list is probably the one you were expecting from the start because this character has never actually been in a video game. Everyone's favorite operating buddy made it in Smash, starting with Brawl, and actually played a big role in the game's single player mode. The robotic operating buddy, also known as Rob for short, is incredibly important in the history of Nintendo, but for a different reason than characters like Mario or Link. Rob was an accessory for the Nintendo Entertainment System that was more of a physical toy that would play games with you. The appearance of having a toy robot bundled with the system helped get the game system sold in toy departments of larger stores and get it purchased by families who were more foreign to the concept of video games at the time. Rob worked with two games, Gyromite and Stack Up. Even though Rob doesn't appear in either of those games as a playable character, they were able to utilize some aspects of his physical plastic incarnation for his moveset, like his gyro move. The game Gyromite had Rob actually spinning gyros in real life to control certain aspects of the game, just like he uses it to control the neutral in Smash. Otherwise, the character in general was largely developed uniquely for Smash, down to the idea his base spews flames all over his opponents as an attack. Rob did have one playable appearance before Brawl in Mario Kart DS as an unlockable racer, complete with unique cards. Popular Brawl mod Project M even included additional costumes for Rob that depicted him in his Mario Kart DS racer as a throwback to this variation of our favorite buddy. As our fourth, fifth, and sixth character, okay well, we'll just consider all in the fourth slot, because it's Mii Fighters. Mii's were originally introduced on the Nintendo Wii console as a changeable avatar for the system. Nintendo toyed with the idea as far back as the Nintendo 64 and had an early version of them almost made into the game called Stage Debut on the GameCube, but this title was cancelled before it saw the light of Battlefield. Mii's were later considered for Brawl, but decided against for numerous reasons. By the time Smash 4 came around, however, Mii's had become a huge part of Nintendo's identity that Sakurai had figured out a way to make them work. Mii's were designed in Smash as the Mii Fighters, creatable characters in one of three archetypes, Brawler, Sword Fighter, or Gunner. You create these characters in one of the setting menus and take them into battle with a selection of predefined special moves. Despite their lack of popularity in Smash 4, the character trio was brought back to Smash Ultimate in nearly the exact same fashion, except sporting a slightly modernized style, looking a bit more grown up from their Smash 4 counterparts. Mii's aren't as prominent in Nintendo's latest console, but can still be made on the Switch and brought into battle. And for the final character that was essentially created for Smash is Greninja? Wait, am I reading this script correctly? Am I actually reading this correctly? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's Greninja. That's right. The winner of Google's 2020 most popular Pokemon poll actually has history in Smash Brothers before their official release in Pokemon X and Y. The sixth generation of Pokemon where fans all over the world met Greninja was released on October 12, 2013. Less than five months later in April, we learned that Greninja would make it into Smash 4 and Smash 3DS launched on September 13, 2014 in Japan, the first time we got our hands on any version of Smash 4. We've all got a feel at this point for the development cycle of Smash and can guarantee that Greninja was planned for release far before their inclusion in Pokemon X and Y, not to mention far before Sakurai's team had any idea of Greninja's future popularity. Every Smash title has introduced new Pokemon to its lineup, but the launch timing of Smash 4 put Sakurai in an interesting position. He knew that a Pokemon would be needed from X and Y, rather than going back to black and white, so a spot was saved until later in development. Sakurai and the team were provided design documents on Pokemon X and Y before release, with a selection of potential candidates for Smash, among which were Greninja. Sakurai had explained additional details behind Greninja's inclusion in a private roundabout table at E3 2014. At the time of the Pokemon X and Y design documents, no video was available of Greninja. Sakurai then, in one night, used a modeling doll to design all of Greninja's attacks and movements, with only the design document and art of Pokemon designer Ken Sugimori. It's possible that the Pokemon Company and Game Freak may have used inspiration from Sakurai's version of Greninja in their future media about this character, and helped boost its popularity after already being included in Smash. And there you have it, five characters that had aspects of them created solely for Smash, apart from their canonical counterparts. And if you want to learn about all aspects of every character in Smash to get better, you know where to go. Check out ProGuides.com for more from us, and that is, of course, after you subscribe here to us on YouTube for free daily content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.